Welcome to another edition of STEM Pro Live brought to you by Maricopa County Education Service Agency. My name is Arlen Godinas and I'm your host today. It's my pleasure to introduce to you Deanna Haas, who's a civil engineer with Kimley Horn. Deanna, would you like to share with our audience your journey and how you came to be a civil engineer? Sure. Um, well, let me start off first. I'm a civil engineer. Um, I'm registered in four different states. Um, when I started out, um, I came from a lower, let's say, lower income family. Uh, my dad was a painter from Mexico, um, immigrated from Mexico, and my mom stayed home with us, me and my twin brother, um, until we were about six years old, and then she became the principal secretary at our elementary school. Um, so I definitely had no idea what an engineer even was um, when I was growing up. Um, I did a lot of math. Um, Played around with a lot of math at home, uh, did, did a lot of art and drawing. Um, I also was a big person in, um, in constructing and building things. So whenever we had like a new piece of uh, furniture on my street, any neighbor who needed um, anything built, I was always the one who um, they wanted to build it. There was something about the instructions. Um, I was willing to actually follow the instructions. Uh, most of the men in my neighborhood did not like following instructions. And so, um, but that, I always figured that the instructions were there for a reason. They're designed um, to make you be able to build whatever it is you got faster and more efficient. And so why would I not use the instructions? So when I was um, in high school, I was you know, trying to think about the next thing in my, in my life, what I wanted to pursue. But I, and I know I wanted to make sure I got um, a good income and I wanted to do something that I liked to do and that was art and math and building. So I took a test in high school um, and the test was supposed to tell me exactly what I would do later on in a career. And based on the things that I like to do, what it told me is I should be an engineer. And I said, what the heck is an engineer? I still don't know what an engineer is. This is before the internet, so I couldn't exactly Google it. Um, and so I did a little research and I found out that it's a pretty darn good job and it's a job that's not really gonna be replaced by robots. So um, I went for a college that's good in engineering, um, ended up getting into that college. I had a job all the way through college to help me pay for it because my parents weren't able to help me. Um, I got some good student loans to help me and then I got a good job at Kimley Horn. So that was actually 12 years ago. I've been here for 12 years. This is my office. Um, and the stuff that I do now is, um, it's called intelligent transportation systems, but it's basically all the smart technology in the road. Um, and I'll show you a little bit about what it is, but. Um, it's basically all the, the technology that helps cars and, and people move um, a lot better on the road. And I also do some of the technology involved in helping um, police and fire and emergency vehicles get to the incidents faster. So I'll show you a little bit about their, about their technology. Got two screens to be more efficient in my work. This is Google Earth. And I flew to where we are, but I'm going to drop drop this little guy at the intersection right next to us. All right, so you got traffic, traffic cameras. You got, this is actually emergency vehicle preemption. This tells, this knows when the emergency vehicles are trying to get through the intersection um, so they can get through faster, more than just the siren. Um, you can see right there, that's a, tel that's a uh, traffic camera to let a um, central management um, location know what's happening at that intersection. So we're kind of the eyes and the ears um, out on the roadway to make sure that we know um, we can help traffic management, incident management move a little better. So that's kind of the stuff that I do um, these days. And the more I think about it, the more um, the inst that instructions became a really um, important part of what, what engineering really is, is you need to be able to design and plan for something very appropriately so when you go build it, you're very efficient with it. Um, so that instructions piece became really important. So that's kind of the stuff that I want to do. If you want to come over, I can show you um, one of my other uh, coworkers who um, is our, in our Phoenix office, and she'll tell you a little bit more about her story. I want to introduce you to Brenda Soto. She's from our uh, Phoenix office, and she also does uh, intelligent transportation systems, but she's on the design side, and she wanted to share her story. Hi, everyone. My name is Brenda Soto. 
I, I wanted to share a little bit about my background. I was born and raised in Mexico until the age of nine. It was at that time when my parents decided to migrate to the US in search of a better quality of life and a better education for my siblings and myself. Uh, moving to Arizona was definitely really hard. We didn't speak the language, so we had to start from zero and work our way to the American dream. Um, I chose engineering, and as a first-generation student, I'm proud to say that I graduated from Arizona State University with my bachelor's and master's in transportation engineering. I decided to go in the fields of engineering since the capability of problem solving always interests me, and being able to work in a team environment and do something that would improve the safety of our people always made me feel like really excited. So that's some of the reasons I chose engineering. I also like to imagine, design, and create. And I feel like engineering just gives you the ability to make something great with everything. So a little bit of what I do. I joined Kimley Horn uh, approximately two years ago. And my daily basis consists of working in signal design, roadway improvements, and I can show you a little bit of a roadway improvement project in Yuma Road, located in Buckeye, Arizona. Uh, first of all, we have to start with a traffic impact analysis, and we have to see how that's going to affect the work that we're planning to do and how we can make it better. So this is something that we do for every project. We start with the introduction, introducing the project, what we have to do. Um, we identify the project location. We identify the existing conditions and everything so that we identify where the problem is and uh, what's gonna be the solution that we're planning for it. Um, as you can see here, this is a plan set, a blueprint of um, everything on this road. This is Yuma Road, and as you can see, we identify the utilities because we want to see if there's a conflict, and if there's a potential conflict, how, how are we going to solve it? So this is installing a 16-inch water main line, and we are trying to feed the north side of Yuma Road. So by installing this water line, we are providing water access for this community and making their life easier. So another thing that I do is I focus a lot on signal design and I brought to you this from Jermaine Road Project. This is actually a project located in Gilbert, Arizona. And we're going, we are performing roadway improvements from Gilbert all the way to Balbista along Jermaine. And what we're doing is we are uh, doing payment markings for the whole uh, Ball Vista to Gilbert Road and we are removing the existing conditions as you can see we label everything what's out there oh well, there's an eight inch solid white line and it's for a left turning movement so we have to identify everything that's out there and we have to say how we're connecting existing to the roadway improvements and how that's going to make it better from this traffic impact analysis we can actually see if, for example, in year 2040, how many vehicles are going to be making a left turn uh, movement? So if it's going to be, um, I don't know, like a big number, like 40,000 vehicles making a left turn uh, movement, then maybe you don't need one lane. Maybe you need a dual left turn lanes. So we identify those problems or we identify those conditions so that we can design for the ultimate condition. So this is what I do on my day-to-day -day basis, and I'm very happy that I was able to share this with you today. All right, thanks, Brenda. I appreciate you being able to share a lot of the, the plan sets that you, that you work on. I um, want to show you a little bit about what this office is like and working here, so let's go. We have, uh, we have 84 offices across the country, and we have about 3,000 people in our firm. So this is certainly not just representative of what we do. This is our uh, water, water resource practice builder. Just kind of, what kind of stuff do you do? Uh, we're doing the Raiders Stadium in Las Vegas. And right now I'm working with Bryce. And he has just brought in the, the storm, he's been modeling a storm drain that goes around the field. This stadium is gonna be like um, the Cardinals field, how this, the field rolls out in the air to grow grass in the desert. And then we push it back in. This is a Raiders Stadium, this is a big stadium, and then the field rolls out. So what we have to do is figure out how much storm water is going to fall on the site and where it's going to go. So right now we're looking at this field tray here, which is, here's another picture of it. It's very detailed. 
and Bryce is designing the storm drain that goes around it, and then we're pumping it out. This field is about 20 feet down in the ground. So then we pump the water out and around the site, and this is the whole site with all the parking and everything. Um, so that's what we're doing right now. Great, is thanks, Lori. We have quite an aviation practice here in our Phoenix Hi. office. Nate Walnum is one of our lead practice builders in aviation. You want to kind of tell them what you do? Sure. Just yeah, 30 so seconds. Uh, I'm an aviation engineer and I work at airports around the country. Uh, airports are very busy places. In uh, the airport in Phoenix, for example, uh, about 45 million passengers a year go through this airport. So if you think about that on a daily basis, that's more people than a Super Bowl each 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 and every day. So yeah. it's very busy. So we design things like roads, parking lots, and runways and taxiways. So for an aircraft that's very heavy, uh, we need 18 inches of concrete. So that's about that thick. Uh, just the concrete on top of really strong base course, which is which is compacted soil. And so we do things like roads and traffic and airports are very busy places. Uh, I'm sure some of you have flown on an airport airplane before. And so if you go there, you park your car somewhere and then you have to ride in Phoenix a train. And so the Phoenix SkyTrain is a project that we have helped design over the last 10 years or so. And so now you get to ride a train to go ride a plane. It's really fun. <laughs> and uh, so airports are very exciting places to be and to work and just a lot going on there. Yeah. And you can see uh, uh, the layout of an airport right there on his walls, a piece of the SkyTrain right out to the that's rental right. car center, a new extension that's going out to the, did I uh -huh. describe yeah. it right, out to the rental car center. Uh -huh. So this is something that, that Nate's doing right now. Um, part of his team that's sitting right outside of his office um, is helping produce all of that. So that's right. it's a pretty, pretty, big, um, pretty big job. Someone's mm. got to do it, right? That's right. <laughs> a lot of fun. Cool. Land development is one of our biggest practice areas. Um, wanted to, to have you guys visit one of the um, head land developers in our Mesa office. Jason Berm. Hello. Hey. Um, can you give us a 30 second of what land development's like and the site civil involved in land development? Absolutely. Uh, so, majority of what we do in land development is to help build uh, projects with water, sewer, roadway design, and drainage. I do several uh, neighborhood kind of residential communities, and we build and help to build those roadways, design those roadways, um, water and sewer that serve the homes within a development and then it's important that we make sure the drainage goes to certain areas and protects those those homes and land development is probably one of the more foundational engineering practices you've got to handle all of the movement on the road and on the uh, the site to get people to and from the locations either residential or commercial as well as a big land development component so um, it's probably one of our biggest biggest practices in, in Kimley Horn is land development. So I wanted to introduce you to Jason. Thank, Thank you. you. This We actually did a little bit of the rental car center design at the Phoenix Airport. Uh, this is some of the pavement, pavement construction that Nate was talking about, the thick layer of pavement. We actually do a lot of that runway design. Um, in case you ever on the freeway, we're part of this is the Intelligent Transportation Systems. We do the system um, interface and uh, software development for providing those travel time and incident messages. So some of the water resources, this is a project at a, at a dam. This is actually the, the part of the dam, not actually the dam itself, but you can see the land development components, all the movement, when it rains, what do you do with all the water? You know, got to make sure that it doesn't pool up next to the building itself and it doesn't block any roadways. So there's a lot that goes on in this de design stuff. Did a transportation master plan for um, the city of, or town of Gilbert. So this is the downtown infrastructure. And then this one over here is SkyTrain. This is the train that Nate was talking about that you take from, from a parking area over into the terminal. This is actually the only um, moving uh, people mover that goes over an active runway. So 
were part of that that very big um, project, first of its kind in, in the country. So Kipling Horn does quite a bit. Um, we're pretty proud of what we do. We have a great team. Um, probably the biggest thing that we do is is work together as a team to get all of these projects completed because no, there's no lone wolves at Kimley Horn. So we're glad to be able to show you a little bit about what we do. Thank you. Hey everybody, now it is time for our question and answer uh, part of STEM Pro Live. Um, I am here with uh, Deanna and Brenda who are here to answer all the fantastic questions we have coming in. Um, in the first half of our program, uh, students heard a lot about uh, the variety of projects that Kimberly Horn works on. How do you describe like what what unites all those projects? What all does Kimberly Horn work on? Lots, lots of different projects. Um, we we focus on public infrastructure projects, um, but also private development. So we have kind of a good public-private mix. Um, the types of projects we usually um, go after involve um, developing a proposal um, for procuring or for, for winning a public agency project. Private infrastructure projects usually are um, land developers who have, um, have funds in order to develop land and build, build residential or commercial infrastructure. And so we partner with those folks to develop our projects. And, we kind of build our staff around the resources in order to develop those projects. And so the more projects we get, the more staff we get to develop those projects. Um, and then do you actually build those projects, like the Raiders Stadium or the SkyTrain? Or are you designing and working with architects? Just what's, take us through that process. Yeah, Kim Kimley Horn's a, a consulting firm. So we don't actually do the construction. Uh, but we do all of the design um, plans, specifications, and estimates related to what will be built by a contractor. So contractor is the one that actually goes builds it in the road or in, in the road on the on the development site, like the Raider Stadium. There's going to be an architect and a contractor that's going to go build it. Um, but we're we're designing most of the the land infrastructure around uh, around the stadium. Um, and so we we're, we partner a lot with architects and um, with uh, the agencies to get this infrastructure in place. But no, we're not actually the ones going and using the hammers and building the building everything. We've got to do the instructions in order to uh, the proper instructions in order to make sure that when they go build it, they're building it right. Awesome, great explanation. Um, and a couple different questions came in about uh, the blueprints that you use. Um, so the first question was, how do you get the information to put on your blueprints, um, looking at conflicts, what all the landscape is? Is that done by people who make observations on site or with technology? So it's a little bit of both. So we do observations of, on sites, like I said. Um, we go to the field and we verify the conditions that are on the field. Like if, if there's a power pole, where is there's a power pole? And then we put it where it is on our blueprints so that we're not in conflict when we're, when we're installing a traffic signal. So it's on record drawings, what has been done in the past, and um, that's how we locate where all the utility lines are. Uh, as well as potholing uh, to identify oh. these utilities. So that's how we locate everything to put it on our plan so that we're not in conflict and we can design better. Awesome. Um, and how long and how many people does it usually take to create a blueprint? So it takes, for example, if you do a whole week, like 40 hours, um, you can start laying out all the utilities. It does take effort, it does take time, because we want to make sure that we're doing a good job and we are drawing something that's representative of what's out there. Mm -hmm. So um, it, is, it does take some effort, but it's a teamwork um, activity. <laughs> awesome. Um, and what kind of software do you use uh, when you're working on blueprints or other designs? Um, yeah, the for the projects you have. The software that we use is AutoCAD. MicroStation. So we use AutoCAD and MicroStation to design, to draw um, the water line. Where is the water line? So we use AutoCAD and we just identify what, if, it, if it's a water line, it's going to have a W to identify that it's a water line. So AutoCAD and MicroStation. And we, we also have, um, <coughs> excuse me, planning softwares that we use. So Synchro for signal timing. Um, we use an ALPS model, which models um, people movement through um, facilities like airports. Um, so there's, there's quite a few different um, softwares that we do use for the variety of practices that we have at Kinley Horn. So AutoCAD and MicroStation are, are the foundational ones easily, but we do have quite a variety. <laughs> um, and then uh, moving back more to before you were both working at Kinley Horn, um, someone asked, what are your education backgrounds? 
So, um, well, I went to high school, and then when I was in high school, I applied to Arizona State University mm -hmm. for an engineering degree and got in. Um, I was very interested in math. It was not always easy to me, so I had to get a lot of uh, tutoring. I had to get the help that was necessary so that I could get my homework done, pass the exam, and pass the classes. But I was always very interested in science. I was always, always interested in math. And like I said, it, it didn't come easy, but I was always willing to do the extra work or the extra effort to understand and um, do what it took to graduate. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, obviously graduated high school. Um, I didn't have uh, any semblance of what an engineer was, and mm -hmm. so um, I knew the, the math and, and drawing and building was important, and so did the best that I possibly could in my classes, and um, gotten into an engineering school that was a great one in California, but that learn by doing was what brought me into that college specifically. Um, so it's, I mean, obviously high school diploma and, um, and bachelor's of science in civil engineering. Awesome. It sounds like, yeah, that, you know, took a variety of science engineering courses in college, but even though, yeah, they were difficult, but you have to push through and, and yeah, find help when you need it and, yeah, earn that degree. Um, related to college, since the question just came in, what major types of math concepts do you use every day? Anything like geometry with angles or shapes or some suggestions that um, this um, audience member made? But, yeah, are there math concepts that you remember learning that you absolutely use? Uh, well, I do a lot of uh, statistical analysis and um, evaluation type uh, math activities. So um, concepts, probable, probability, uh, I would say is important. Probably the most important thing I've got out of the math classes that I took was the ability to problem solve. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't really matter what the problem was being, that what, what problem was being given to me, I needed to become resourceful in order to answer the problem. problem. So like Brenda was discussing, if, if I had a challenge and I didn't know how to, how to solve it, math is certainly gonna give you challenges. Find a tutor, find, find help, find a, a mentor to try to get the answer to it. So it wasn't so much the, uh, the math concepts that I use day to day these days, but the problem solving ability is something math taught me right away. Awesome. And I'm with Deanna too. I feel like you take all these classes, all these math classes, but at, at the end, it's teaching you how to problem solve and like, how are you gonna solve this um, situation right here? And there's a lot of classes. There's geometry, like we took it in high school. Um, maybe they're taking it earlier on in their education now. Um, but there's a lot of, there's a lot you take from all these classes, and I think the biggest thing is like it teaches you, it teaches you how to solve a, a situation. Yeah, yeah, to not give up. Yes. Um, and related to that, um, um, Mr. Amway's uh, or Mr. Anway's fifth grade uh, class asked, "Do you ever get frustrated in the design process, and then how do you move forward from that?" So talk about because that okay, you both giggle. So clearly, that's a part of the job. That yes. yes. I mean, that's part of design. The engineering process is. You have, to, you have to try something, develop it, test it out, see if it'll work, and s nine times out of 10, it doesn't work the first time you try mm -hmm. to design it. So you've gotta go back and try something new. That's, that's the problem solving is, um, the process is to get you to a spot where you've designed something that's, that's within a factor of safety, it's very solid design concept, it's constructible, it's something that can actually be built, and so, yeah, the design process is a constant iteration process. Does it get you frustrated? Absolutely. But part of the part of the reason why I really like this job as an engineer is when you do finally get something down right, mm -hmm. it feels really good. And it's and when you can actually see it built, it's amazing. And you know you did it, and you know you worked through the the hard effort to actually make it right. And it's so the process is is it's just part of it. Mm -hmm. It makes it makes whatever you design that much better. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, being able to drive around parts of Arizona and what saying, you, yes, that's I contributed to that. And the and way you this know works. exactly why that pole is where it is because it can't go on the other side of the road, or wow. it can't, you know. And and trying to describe that to people who aren't in engineering. Is fun, um, but because the design process is not something that everybody goes through. Mm -hmm. Engineers go through it on an almost daily basis. So, <laughs> great answer. Um, <clears throat> one great question that came in: How challenging is it for women to get engineering positions in companies like Kimley Horn? 
So, <coughs> yeah. So, yeah. I feel like nowadays um, there's a lot of role models that are out there that have already paved the road. And, and it's not easy to go into this field where it's dominated by men, mm -hmm. if you want to see it that way. But I feel like there's a lot of women enrolling into these engineering classes and graduated with engineering degrees. And we're as capable of, uh, as men. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, I mean, women are willing to go the extra mile to get mm -hmm. recognized for, for the job that we're doing that maybe mm -hmm. for men it doesn't take that um, much to do mm -hmm. and we just have to do a little more. But I feel like it, it's not... Um, as challenging that it may have been uh, years ago, sure. but it's definitely something that if, if you want to do it, you can do it. You just, just go do it. Just go do it. <laughs> awesome. Take that step and go do it. Awesome. Uh, another great question from Ms. Simmons' fifth grade class. Um, how do you use teamwork in problem solving? And maybe also talk about how much do you work with teams here? Oh, that's, yeah, I mean, the. the there's more, more you can get out of uh, two brains. There's even more you can get out of three brains. There's no, like I said in the, the intro video, there's no lone wolf here. Everybody's got strengths, everybody's got weaknesses, and, and part of it is you build a team around how to design and, and, and engineer something that's gonna be a solid concept, and bringing together lots of those perspectives um, is a very important thing. We do, we do something here called QC, it's quality control, but Part of it is getting a third party person involved in your project who has not touched the design process and just comes with a fresh eye and just, just checks out what, what it is you did and, and asks questions. <laughs> and if something that they ask is not clear, you make it clear. It's part of the process is getting, getting that team environment together. Something I do every, on an everyday basis is um, try to be creative in um, solving those problems. So I don't necessarily do design plans these days. I do more planning. Uh, agency funding planning uh, for intelligent transportation systems, but part of that is being creative every day and work in a, a brainstorming environment with my team to, to come up with solutions. So it's a very important thing to have to awesome. teamwork. <laughs> Fantastic. And then final question for this morning, um, and again, I'll try to see if we can get some of these answered after the fact that we can post uh, written answers on our website. Um, but for those watching who are maybe saying, oh, hey, engineering does sound really cool, um, yeah, being able to drive around and like be a part of those projects that we see just surrounding every, every part of our lives. Um, what, what can they do now to kind of get started in that? Or what, what um, advice or encouragement do you have for people interested in pursuing that path? Uh, I, would, I would say if, if you have a passion behind something, just, just take, don't worry about the end goal. Just take the first step toward, toward pursuing it. Mm -hmm. and, if you want to become an engineer, an architect, an astronaut, a, uh, whatever, w whatever it is you want to strive toward, you need to take steps along the way to get there. Don't, don't worry about the end goal too much. Just, just focus toward the end goal, uh, but you need to take individual steps to do it and, and get help. Um, if you need, I didn't know any engineers growing up. Um, that was a disadvantage to me, but I never let it stop me because I knew the steps that I needed to take. I needed to get into an engineering college. I needed to make sure I graduated that college. And I needed to make sure I did what I could do to get an engineering job. And you know what? I'm an engineer. So there's, <laughs> there's no insurmountable um, obstacle if you just take the next step. Mm -hmm. Just make it happen. Yeah, so I agree with Diana. You just have to make it happen. You have to take the first step. And if you take the first step, you're one step closer to yeah. achieving your dreams. So, yeah, don't just be a wallflower. I mean, mm -hmm. do something. Do something. If you want it, do go for it. Nice, nice. Pursue those classes. Yes. Get involved Pursue in those it. clubs your school might right. offer. Yeah, yeah. Right. That. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for everybody who's watching uh, with us this morning. Thank you so much, Brenda and Deanna, and everyone at Kimley Horn for letting us come in this morning um, and see some of the projects they're working on, talk with them variety of employees. Thank you so much again uh, for, yeah, everybody watching and joining us here. Thank you. Thank you.